Hello and uh, welcome to this video. I will be distributing all the fort's weapons into the Shown Tears right here. I did this recently with the commanders, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Uh, so anyways, let's begin. It's simply... Alright, starting off with the machine gunner. The simple little machine gunner. They're very good in here. Uh, they have constant rate of fire, but they do have a cooldown if you fire it too much. You can trench them. Uh, they're very cheap. You know, they have one They have one purpose, and that's pretty much it. Um, so just a standard bead here, just for that reason. Alright, next up, the minigun. The minigun, I find to be not that useful. You can use it to... You group them. If you have, if you have three of them, they are useful. And um, they could easily take out machine gunners, if you're trying to get rid of Antia, for example. Um... Depending on which commander you are, they are extra useful, you know. Uh, the firing angle is not that good, you know. So you need to, like, delete them, rebuild them in a spot where you want to fire them, depending on the angle you want, you know. Uh, but then you have to upgrade them to miniguns, you know. Uh, so I don't think, in terms of usefulness, the, uh, the minigun is not as useful as a simple machine gun. You know, that might stand up ages. But you have to upgrade them. C tier. Just standard C tier. Now, of course, everyone's going to disagree. Or well, some of them will disagree. They'll say I'm wrong. I don't care. I'm showing my final conclusions to thoughts as I'm moving on from it. You know? So feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Alright? To get an AP minigun, you have to be armadillo. And you have to upgrade it from a machine gun. I mean, a, a minigun, I meant. So that's two upgrades. So I believe... The AP minigunner goes in at least B tier, but I don't think it's a. I don't think it's that good though. But they're, they're just expensive, you know. The sniper goes in S tier. You know why? It's very simple. It is cheap and it's effective and it's used by any good player. You know, will always use a sniper at the start of the game. All right? Sniping is effective. It's cheap and effective. The sniper is a sniper. There's nothing useless about it. Very useful. It's very handy. It's cheap. So, S tier. Because I believe it's one of the best weapons in the game. Alright, next up. The AP Sniper. Yes, that's the way I say Sniper. The AP Sniper goes in D tier. Because I find it useless. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, not used that often. Uh, it's rare. I find it rare to see players use this, uh, this, type, this weapon. I mean, clearly... Okay, you're sure you can snipe past between one door, but that's it. A player can easily get two doors. That applies to good players, alright? But you're just like, you're spreading an upgrade from one of the best weapons in the game to something where it has a less, an increased reload duration. What's the point of it? I don't get it. So, D tier. Because I find it to be the worst weapon in the game. Now, the regular mortar can be used in many ways. It can distract into air. It can be useful and effective at an early game if you rush mortars. Uh, it can basically be used in like uh, in any part of the match, you know? Oh, actually, well, the upgraded mortars, yeah. But uh, in Serian mortars, they are cheap. And if you group them by three, they're useful. There's nothing bad about them. They're just, they're just so effective. And I'm pretty sure two of those projectiles can destroy a shield. You'll be surprised by the damage they can do. That's my opinion. So I believe mortars, they deserve to go to an A tier. I don't think they're the best weapon in the game, but clearly very useful. So A tier. Next up, the upgraded mortar. I find the upgraded mortar to be useful throughout an entire match. If you manage to get three of these bad boys and use them at an opponent and they have no end here, you pretty much win the match like that. And yeah, sure, you have to upgrade them to do cost, but the damage they can perform is just insane. Depending on where they hit, you know. So I believe Mortars are uh, simply one of the best in the game. So S tier. Now I'm sure people are going to say, no, you're wrong and all that. I just think it's S tier, okay? If you think otherwise, share it in the comments. Alright, the Buzzsaw. The buzzsaw, I believe, is one of the... Meh. I was going to say the best... <laughs> no. Well, 
Yeah, it's effective for what it can do, but it's only effective at destroying words, but no metal. The buzzsaw is basically the problem solver. What I call the moonshot weapons, the problem solving weapons or tools, actually, you know. Uh, the buzzsaw is effective, can take out connections to a, a different platform. They can take a regular wood and background woods, you know. Like, if you use a buzzsaw at an opponent where they sell the metal, yeah, you could punish them like that. So, buzzsaw, there's nothing, there's no flaws about it, except it just, it just can't do anything against metal. However, if the opponent does build metal and it's not built yet, it can destroy it. That is something too. But I'm not going to immediately say that's the best weapon in the game. It's a useful tool, but it at least deserves to go in A tier. Alright, next up, the swarms. The swarms. I don't see anything wrong with them, but they do require space instead of a mine. And they they don't they don't cost that much to fire. And uh, if the opponent again, if it, if they're not ready, you know they can do damage depending on where you hit. Like a bunch of sh uh, shields behind a bunch of turbines, gone. Now depending on which command you are, like you know seep, firebird. You know, they can do a bit extra. I don't find them to be useless, depending on the match. Um, so I'm going to say it's like basically in the middle. And they deserve B tier. Now predicting, some might say, no, 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 C tier, you know. No, B tier. I, I've, seen, I've seen how they use, they're just, they're, just, they're useful, all right? They're mostly useful. All right, next up, the nuke. The warheads. Now, most of the players call them nukes, but they're called warheads. Yeah, back in the day, I used to call them a war mine. Don't ask me why. It happened. <laughs> uh, the warhead uh, did receive a, uh, a nerf for the build time to build one of these or upgrading one of these. So you might as well be overdrive if you want to get them quickly and rush them. Um, it's, I find them worse than swarms. You know why? Because that can be shot down easier, you know? So let's say if you're playing, you know, see, they can be traveled faster. Um, if you're playing Buster, Warthog, or Firebird, they are deadly. And, but, it's just that nukes, it takes like all this extra time to upgrade and get one of these and launch, and they do, they're cost effective too. Uh, so if you want to fire one of these, you might as well, you're going to have a combination, basically, to fire one of these. So like a swarm and a nuke. Because swarms basically protect the nuke on arrival. But I don't think the single nuke alone, the single nuke alone is not useful because, again, it could be shot down. And of course, if you play seep, if it does get shot down, it turns into a bunch of swarms. But that applies basically to the second worst commander, in my opinion. Uh, so the nuke, it's it does a lot of damage, it does the most damage in the game. But just itself alone, like you need a combination with this. So. I'll give it C tier. Now, uh, here, yeah, here it comes the, the criticism. Oh, Brusky's wrong. Oh, he forgets his technology. Yeah, I saw that comment. <laughs> Why would you place the weapon that does the most damage in C tier? Why? I'm judging it by its own self, is what I'm saying. Alright, moving on. The fog launcher, or the smoke launcher, or the smoke stack. Or like to call it the Schmoker. And I think it's called the Smoke Stacker or the Smoke Launcher, but I, I rather prefer it to call it the Schmoker. It's easier for me. And the Schmoker can easily backfire. Uh, the doors are open for a while as it's launching. They can be very useful. So instead of taking it here behind the doors, you just block them from being able to fire. But then, yeah, as, as useful as people might think, well, all the opponent needs to do is get repair stations, like I should have done when I was playing against some punk in that second round. And you'll find that all oh, the smoke launchers are, oh, they're not all that great, you know? Once you've got repair stations the end. Uh, they can easily backfire if they get destroyed and someone catches on fire in the behind the smoke. They, yeah, it's, it's not it's not happy fun time, right? Uh, there are cases where if you launch swarms and fire smoke and the swarms don't know where to go, they do spread out because they've lost their target because of the smoke. Uh, so I'm not going to say that smoke is the best weapon, but they are useful. They are used for a combination. Uh, of course, it can be used to prevent the opponent from building, you know, that type of thing. But I think it's just best to use for like the anti-air purposes. 
So the single weapon alone itself just doesn't do much. It really does no damage. It, it's, it's only, it goes into the tier of cause and effect. So by itself, I think it's standard. Uh, it's not one of the worst weapons in the game itself, but it goes in C tier. But like with the nuke, you have to use it as a combination. So C tier, okay? All right, the flak, the regular flak. I don't find anything wrong with the flak. It's just, I find it to be useless sometimes, like the energy dome and high seas. Oh yeah, and that reminds me too. Um, I haven't placed any of the high seas weapons in this because I find that the high seas weapons are just, well, the high sea DLC in general is not, shouldn't really be part. It shouldn't really combine with the original forts or tons of guns and moonshot. It's just weird because high seas weapons are meant for like out on the sea, you know, naval combat. So it depend, it's just because how chaotic they are used on moving and, you know, sailing forts or, you know, ships. I can't really rank them because, you know, they're just meant to use for fun, basically. I haven't really made much skill with them, you know. All right, so the flak, so I've seen it fail sometimes, like the energy dome. And I find the energy dome is useless. They let me down all the time. And don't get me started on sinking Nemo. However, the flak did their job on sinking Nemo. I'm going to say they're useful. You need basically at least two flak to take out a howitzer. A single flak can take out a howitzer. How right outrageous is that? Well, a shotgun can. You have to use it manually, but you can use automatic if you're shock and all. Uh, but the flak, they can take it at swarm easily. Uh, just anything, you know, besides a howitzer, it's fine. But you need to build more flak if you're going to protect yourself against a how to show yeah so the flak they are useful they're obviously better than a machine gun uh, they cost a bit more uh, but they can do their job but just not against house uh, just not against houses so that's the thing it's the best NTR weapon well you can compare it to a shotgun but you have to use it manually uh, I believe the flak should go and beat here now I think that is fair next up the shotgun I do not see anything wrong with the shotgun. I like to compare the shotgun to a minigun. Well, first off by its firing angle. You'll notice that both a, uh, a minigun and a shotgun, they can do damage to metal when the metal is horizontal. Now, with the shotgun, as it does cost more, you have a better firing angle. And I believe a shotgun is far better in terms of anti air, but you have to use it manually. You know, that's your shock and all. They can take out a hats no problem. They can do, you know, low tier damage to a base. You know, you, you just spam them and they just, they do stuff. You know, anything exposed, a wind mine or uh, um, a windmill or a machine gunner, destroyed. It's that good. And they can do something to, to uh, wood as well. So I don't see any flaws with the shotgun. Um, so I believe shotgun is one of the best weapons in the game. Now, I'm aware that I might be wrong here, but this is what I think in my experience. Next up, the EMP, it's it, it's only a one job. It disables devices when it hits. It shows you what was disabled. It just disables the shield and portal. It has one task. It's a rocket. It can be shut down, you know. It's basically a tool for lasers. You know, uh, but if you play a moonshine, you don't need an EMP. I'll just say that. So an EMP, there's nothing wrong with it. It does its task. Uh, so I believe it should be treated the same way as a machine gunner. So I believe the EMP goes in B tier. All right, next up, the rockets. So the upgraded rockets, well, the rockets you upgrade from an EMP. Um, uh, now, if there was... If there was a rank like C minus or D plus, I would place it there. But uh, I have to place the rockets between C and D. All right, if the rockets are not that useful. Some players might say if you rush the opponent with mini guns and rockets, you can win because there's splash damage. I find that tactic just to be. I believe just doing that tactic just doesn't improve your skill. Uh, I believe the rockets just, it just it's, it's basically like a tool, but it just does an extra bit of damage, you know? 
The workers are just there, it's just so you can do something, you know. They have a slight quicker reload speed compared to a munitions or factory weapon. Um, but they can be shot down easily. I think they have the same speed as, as an EMP rocket. So if you need some splash damage, you can use one of these. Again, it really depends on, on it, you know. Because obviously if you're playing a 4 4 3 3 they're not going to be useful. Because at least one of those bases are going to have anti air. Alright, and they can be shot down easily. It just... The rockets are just not that good, all right? You know, I think some people would place it in C tier, but in my experience, it it goes in D tier. It, this, it's, it's just not that useful, all right? It's only useful in certain situations. So rockets, D tier. All right, next up, the 20 mil cannon. Uh, well, you know, one task, it does damage. The projectiles spread out, they hit in random spots. It's not accurate unless you're playing Scattershot. Um, they are useful if you play Buster, Warthog, Moonshine. Uh, it, it's nothing wrong with the 20 mil. Problem is the doors are open for longer, so they can be sniped by like two shots. I think they're not useful, but they're not useless. So I believe they go in C tier. All right, next up the cannon. I believe the cannon is one of the best weapons in the game. It's simple. It has the right cost, provides the right value. The right damage, S tier. I find that the cannon is better than the laser. I find that the cannon can do better in splash damage compared to a laser with focus damage. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a cannon. It's clearly one of the best weapons in the game. Again, you play with either Warthog, Eagle Eye, or Buster. They just they are so OP if you have like three of them. All right. Yeah, it's clearly one of the best weapons in the game. S tier. All right, the Howitzer. The Hanser, they are deadly if you rush it, you know, like with Mortis. Uh, but the damage comparison compared to Mortis and Hanser's, well, clearly different. The Hanser's do cost the most. And I said this before, but the Hanser's, you know, they, they kind of replace the nukes, the warheads. So the Hanser's, they're useful, you know. It's basically, yeah, you can also use them single-handed as well. It, it's fine. There's nothing useless about it, you know? So if you if you use one of these with a cannon as a combination, yeah, it's just OP. They are so useful in terms of damage. So, Houtzers, A tier at least. Now, I'll accept that it could go in S tier. It could. I just don't see it that way. But it at least goes in A tier, a standard best. The Fire Beam does excellent in most cases. Uh, if you use like Firebird, the fire duration is longer. Uh, they, they can be used in many ways, like with the Mortis. They can, well, they don't distract the NTA, but they block the NTA, and that's all B. They can light the, the uh, projectiles on fire. So like Mortars, Swarms, a Nuke, or a Houtzer. But they, um, they burn off the cannon and 20 mil projectiles. So they can be used in many, many ways. They are also cheap as well, way cheaper than compared to a laser. So the, the fire beam, it does fire damage, not actual damage. The fire beam, I could easily consider to be S tier, but like with the howitzer, I find it to be that is similar as the howitzer in terms of usefulness. So I believe the fire beam deserves to go in at least A tier. All right, it's just excellent, very excellent. If there was a rank of A+, I'll place it there. Alright, next up. The Magna Beam. The weapon I have most criticisms about. Yes, you heard it. You knew it. You foreseen it coming. I'm going to debate about how the Magna Beam is used and how it's rigged when it's used the wrong way as I perceive it. Like it shouldn't have reflected my allies fire into my base. So basically the magna beam, uh, mag magnetizes the uh, projectiles to hit one certain spot. Depending on where the laser hits. Uh, itself does no damage. But it basically falls in the same rank as the smoker. As cause and effect. If you're playing a team deathmatch. Your allies fire would hit your base. If they're not aware. So as you're seeing me, that's why you are not don't fire, don't fire, don't fire, or hold fire, hold fire, hold fire, you know? So yeah, I find the Magna Beam, as its task is meant to draw the allied fire into one of the enemy bases, 
But one of the things I disagree with, and I believed this was implemented by what I assumed was implemented by the developers for balance. I believe if the magda beam is used wrongly, like what I'm trying to say is the enemy magda beam fired at one of the allies' bases. I believe it cannot cause the allies' firepower to hit one of those bases. I, I just think it's wrong in terms of balance. And I've been saying this for ages. If this was an actual thing, then it would be abused in every match. And then, of course, I tried to prove that in one match, but someone didn't want to hold fire, as instructed. It's just one thing I disagree with, the Magda Beam, in terms of balance. Uh, maybe I should ask the developers that. So, in terms of usefulness of Magda Beam, yeah, depending on how you use it, if you're careful, sure, useful. But it's good at backfiring, though. It's dangerous. Yeah, it's not commonly used as, like, a normal laser or fire beam. It's just there to do that bit of extra if you have good communication with your teammates for example as you've seen me use the magna beam a lot in my videos you see how that goes uh so the magna beam i believe it goes in c tier oh oh no i can sense it via the fourth dimension a lot of comments they don't agree with me i'm wrong oh no ah you know what? i think i'm right c tier because it can easily backfire, all right? Magnum backfire. That's my reason, all right? It's just some things are not clear about it and uh, oh, well, it's what, what it's meant to do and how it's used and, you know, but what it can do and cause an effect, yeah, all right, sure, it's useful, all right? But you need a good communicative team to be able to use it effectively. That's why I place it in C tier. All right, next up, dear laser. The laser itself, it doesn't feel like it does all that much. It's the laser itself. You have to be using a combination, like a fire beam and a laser. Okay, yeah, that will do something. Like fire, uh, like laser combination rush. That's all B. The laser itself just doesn't do much. You have to use something else. The laser does cost a lot more. And as I said, the cannon does better than a laser. So I, I, I believe it's one of these cases where I believe the laser deserves some sort of buff, you know? But I might be wrong here, so maybe like a itty bitty buff, maybe. Yeah, so the laser, it's only used for the combination. Uh, sorry, I had to cut recording there, so I wasn't sure what I just said recently. I, I believe the laser itself is just like a mid-tier weapon uh, in terms of usefulness. So I believe it goes in B-tier, but the laser can be extra useful if it's used in a combination. I understand that. Yeah. I'm not going to predict everything, you know. <laughs> this is my list, my tier list of all the fort's weapons. This is what I think, where they are currently balanced at. So, yeah. Uh, so, share your thoughts in the comments. I know that it's not perfect, but this is my list. What I think from my experience. I have to keep saying that because people just don't understand, you know. Um, so, yeah. You know, as I said, I'm moving on from forts, so... Oh, hey, watch... Oh, watch Brewski upload his next video. It's going to be forts, even though he still was quitting. Yeah, do your research a bit more, all right? I'm just doing this for the people who don't know the game that well to give them an idea of what's useful in-game. All right, so anyways, that's my list. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe to follow the channel. And I shall see you next time in another video. So until then, have a good day.